scrolling. Well, welcome to our R2 to J podcast. And I have my good friend here, Justin Slaughter. Justin is a up and coming actor. Justin, how did you get in that field? Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm honored to be here. Um, I've always wanted to be an actor, and this isn't something that I just woke up one day and be like, I want to be an actor. This is something that I've always dreamt of. You know, um, when I was in school, graduating from Memorial, Miss Haynes was my theater arts teacher. You know, I, I paid attention in class because I loved it. I love performing arts. You know, I love watching movies. I love watching TV shows. Heck, when I was a kid, I played Power Rangers. I'm pretty sure every kid did, but I really felt the conviction when I played, when I morphed. I really felt like I was, you know, and, you know people bought into that. We had talent shows at, in my neighborhood as a kid growing up, and they were like, man, he's really good. Like, he ought to be like an actor. Mm -hmm. But um, when I graduated from Memorial, you know, I moved to California. I moved to Santa Clara, California. And I was going to the Art Institute of San Francisco, and I was taking uh, theater and audio engineering because I was also doing music. Um, I was serious about it. You know, I did my headshots. I submitted for films. I did a couple plays. Um, I did a play, uh, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber. It was based on a film with Johnny Depp. That was uh, one of the first gigs I ever did. Um, but then I moved back home to Port Arthur. You know, I worked at the refinery for a while just to try to, you know, make some extra money. You know, plus I miss my mom, but you know, acting was something that was still, you know, in my heart that I wanted Passion to do. Passion for you, right? And you know, I got into health and fitness. You know, I worked out a lot, became a personal trainer. You know, left the um, petrochemical industry, went into health and fitness because I felt like, okay, you know, being an actor is my main goal. But if I stay in this industry, it's gonna dim my passion. So if I get into health and fitness, you know, I can be healthy, I can think better, I can do more, I can network better. So that's what I did. You know, I started becoming a personal trainer at World Gym Mid County before that place closed down. Um, then I, I was still doing music, so I did a song called One More Rep um, featuring uh, Elijah Guillory. So you're a singer too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. And, um, can you get closer to the mic? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we did the song One More Rep, and I immediately wanted to do a music video to it. So I contacted my buddy Terrence Prevost. You know, we graduated together, and he shot the music video. I was able to get, you know, a few, few people from the gym to be a part of it. You know, I, I wanted to connect everybody, you know, because at the gym, you know, you, you see people, but you're not really connected. So when we shot the video, we was able to really become friends. But for me, it was an inner plan to kind of get familiar with being on camera. Yeah. Because, you know, with a music video, you still have to act. So for me, even though I wanted to bring people together internally, I also wanted to use this as a stepping stone to kind of have like a real, so I have something on my resume. You know, One More Rep was probably my very first, you know, on camera, you know, project. Yeah. But it wasn't until Hurricane Harvey when um, things was going crazy when I really got my shot. Um, you know, a friend of mine, she's a casting director. Uh, her name is Katret. She uh, gave me a call asking me, you know, how I'm doing. I was like, well, it's pretty bad. I mean, I didn't lose any power. A lot of people did. I'm not flooded, but a lot of people are. Uh, and it's, it's real crazy out here. And, you know, she donated a lot of toiletries and stuff to, you know, the city of Port Arthur. And she offered me a gig. She said, um, well, I know you don't really have a legitimate acting resume, but I can get you started. So I asked, you know, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, I'm the casting director for Godzilla, King of the Monsters. I'm like, shut up. Yeah, and nice. she said, no, I'm serious. Like, it's like, like well, that, that's what's up. I said, congratulations. I said, thank you. I was wondering if you wanted to work on it. And I was like, do I want to work on it? Let me think. Uh, yeah, duh, of yeah, course. Uh, yeah. So, you know, she you know, she offered me the gig. She told me if I know anybody else who wants to be a part of it, send them their her way. So I contacted my buddy Justin Langston. I said, Hey Justin, you busy? I said, just trying to keep water out the house. What's up? I said <laughs> I said, Hey man, um, you wanna work on Godzilla with me? He's like, Heck yeah, when do we leave? Uh, tomorrow. We're driving to Atlanta tomorrow. So he packed his stuff up. He met me at my apartment. You know, I contact a tread. I said, it's going to be me and my buddy Justin. I was like, wait, it's two Justins? I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know I'm Justin Slaughter. Mm -hmm. But then my buddy name is Justin Langston. 
I said, okay, I got you on the list and everything. I'm going to need, um, you know, copies of your driver's license and all this stuff to let them know that you're coming. So, you know, we got there. Um, it was, I want to say it was like a nine, ten hour drive. And um, when we got there, we got there pretty early. We made it a set just to check out the place before we made it to our rooms to get some sleep. And he didn't believe it. I honestly didn't believe it, but I, you know, I had faith that it was all legit. So the next day we made it to set, and you know, there's all these trailers. It was it was actually in Norcross, Georgia, where Godzilla King of the Monsters was filmed. And he said, Bro, like if this is not real, I don't really care. I'm just away from, you know, Port Arthur. I said, Bro, it is this is real. So, you know, we get out the car, we got our bags and everything, and you know, we show our um this little this little um code. So whenever you're filming something and then if you're like a background or a double there's a, a little code you have in your email to um get clearance to get through a gate now it's not going to say godzilla king of the monsters these films are always under a code so the code name was fathom so you know we was led into the gate and all you see is these trailers and the first person we see was a uh, ice cube son o'shea jackson jr and he's already suited up in his marine gear. And then we saw Millie Bobby Brown, and my buddy's like, "Man, it's Millie Bobby Brown." I'm like, I, I know, man. Just <laughs> calm down. <laughs> just start just calm down because internally I'm freaking out, but I need you to calm mm-hmm. down. But um, overall, you know, it was a great experience. You know, um, she helped me out a lot because um, she was able to get me in to the scenes with the main actors, with um, which is uh, Kyle Chandler and Thomas Middleditch. And Kyle Chandler, he was the one that really gave me some helpful advice to kind of move forward. And, you know, he told me a lot of people who start off in the film industry, they start off as extras, you know, background. But a lot of people, they get complacent. You know, they're used to, you know, getting free food, which most work through, getting paid, getting the wardrobe, and being around the famous people. But if you want to actually be a lead actor or a supporting actor, you have, you know, you want to network, you want to do a couple of student films, build your resume up, be, uh, you know, learning the craft. So, you know, from Godzilla, you know, I worked on Avengers Endgame, but it was more like crew work. So I did a lot of CGI, body scan. Um, but but I, I that's really, the most important part that you gain experience in right, the field. Right. I gained the experience. But after what Kyle Chandler said about not being complacent and, you know, taking the necessary steps to be um, ready for the bigger roles, I was very uncomfortable working on Avengers because, you know, I met Robert Downey Jr. I met Chris Evans, but... I didn't get a chance. I don't, I'm not working with them. I'm not talking to them like I'm talking to you. Even though we did talk, you know, we're not in the scene together. I'm just over body scans and CGI, and they use my character to duplicate it and put it in the scene and change my ethnicity and stuff like that. But I was very uncomfortable because, you know, I want to be in front of the camera. You know, yeah, you know, that could have been you in there. Right. So, you know, I did student films. You know, I sucked. You know, I'm not going to lie, I sucked. You know, I didn't go over my script like I, like I was supposed to, you know, but I learned my lesson. So what I did, you know, I started studying. You know, I started taking acting classes. And if you got to film yourself as well, too. And just right. You watch and see what you're doing, what you're going wrong, pretty much. Right. Well. So my first, my first uh, supporting role film was 90 Feet From Home, um, starring um, WWE Hall of Fame legend Shawn Michaels. Eric Roberts, uh, Julia Roberts' brother, Dean Kane. Everybody knows Dean Kane. He was Superman. Um, so that was my very first supporting role film. And, you know, we had the world premiere at the Chinese Theater. And, you know, that film is what really helped me, you know, as an actor. You know, I got verified on Google. You know, I started getting verified on other social media handles. Um, but then I started also getting recognized by casting directors to, to work on other films, you know. And then I wound up getting an agent. So, you know, it's it's the little nuggets that people gave me, you know, along the way that really helped me get from being a background actor to a supporting role to now a starring role as Adam Huxley in Egress. Yeah. So it's, it's been a journey. It's and been- it's a big event coming up soon, right? Yes. This Saturday, November 18th at the Jefferson Theater. We are having an exclusive, actually a red carpet screening of Egress. We're showing uh, three of the episodes, The Rattlesnake, Redemption, and Dead in the Water. Um, not only that, you know, everybody who attend this screening, if you're an aspiring actor, actress, filmmaker, you know, if you want to be a writer, if you want to be a director, you definitely want to be here because we 
want to get people on board for our feature film we're going to be filming next year. So we're going to be doing some casting, some hiring, and we'll be touch basing more on that, you know, at the event. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Yeah. I already told you I might want to be an extra. Who knows? They might want to cast me as a supporting role or whatever. We'll see. Exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, now I'm not just the lead actor. I'm also the executive producer. Okay. And I'm also a part owner of the production company. Oh, dang. Okay. So it's, it's been a journey. It's, you know, and I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't change anything, you know. I was an extra for a reason. You know, I did background work for a reason. You know, I think if it was never for that, I wouldn't be able to be where I'm at now. So, you know, but it having this type of um, responsibility, you know, it, it's a lot. You know, it's, it's, it's not for everybody. But one thing I did say, you know, if I'm going to be executive producer, if I'm going to be part owner, you know, there are some things that I need to make sure that I'm happy with this, you know. I want to make sure that I can help other people get in because, you know, we live in an area where you're either working in the refineries, you're going into law enforcement, um, you're getting into the medical field, um, or, you know, convenience stores, grocery stores, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that at all. But when the city you live in is just built on that 24-7 mentality, it dims the light of anything else you want to do. You know, this has always been a petrochemical industry, and that's phenomenal. You know, the city's thriving off of that. Only downside is not everybody wants to be a pipe filler. Not everybody wants to be a process operator. No, not water is, is, exactly. Not everybody wants that, you know. You know, some people want to be a writer. And, you know, some people want to be a director. Somebody wants to be an actor. Somebody wants to be a visual effects artist. Or somebody wants to be a, a doctor. But the thing is, you know, we don't have the resources here because, you know, people in higher positions put their money elsewhere. Yeah. So, you know, I definitely believe that it's time for a change and I want to be that change and that bridge to help people get to where they want to go. Mm -hmm. Now, you said there's a three part series, right? Yeah. So um, not a three part series. Um, it's. So there's actually more episodes in this series, okay. but we're only showing three of the episodes. Okay. But you know, if you don't, if you're not able to make it to the Jefferson Theater Saturday, you will be able to stream it on a plat on a streaming platform. Um, I'm pretty sure you heard about the Writers Guild strike and the Screen Actors Guild yeah. strike. Well, you know, that ended already. Though, huh? Right, it ended already. But when everything was going on, we was on hold with everything. You know, we couldn't get our films written because the strike was going on. We couldn't negotiate deals with other actors because the strike was going on, mm. so it, w it was hard. Yeah, but, but the moment the Writers Guild strike ended, our writers got on board, started writing our scripts for the films. As soon as the Screen Actors Guild strike ended, our negotiation with Netflix started coming in, everything started back rolling. I'm like, finally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> finally. That's good. And this is also going to bring a lot of jobs to the area as well, too, right? Absolutely, because with the film... We're not just looking for actors, actresses, productions, assistants, you know, all these things. We're also looking for laborers because, you know, the sets that we need built, you know, it's going to call for carpenters, electricians, scaffold builders, like, you name it. Fire alarm technicians, like, extinguishers. We, we, like, it's just a full-on labor. The same thing it takes to build a house, to build a place of business is the same exact thing. And the thing is, it doesn't stop there. When you invest into this type of work, this work would generate a, a great amount of revenue to put back into the city. The same way, you know, any other job. You know, we pay our taxes. Our taxes are supposed to go towards the streets getting rebuilt, which it doesn't really get built because there's yeah. still potholes everywhere. Yeah. But, you know, if, and I believe, if the city really wants economic change, this can be a good step to be able to add another genre of work to add another, you know, way for other workers to be involved. Because acting is just like working at the refinery. You know, if you're used to working 712s, working a turnaround, it's the same exact same thing. thing. You're working on a movie, three months, four months, you know, maybe a year, that turnaround's over, you move on to the next. So, of course, when these jobs end, we need the same laborers to dismantle their stuff that they did. Because I'm not a licensed electrician, which means I'm not touching nothing electrical you know, and get shocked because I want to help out the unplug stuff. No, that's their job. I let them. I let them do that. 
So, you know, with, with the film industry, you know, it's so much more than just, you know, acting or directing. You, you have so many people that makes this engine move. And, you know, and I will be touching base on this. And I'm probably going to be repeating the same exact thing at the screening, at the Look. premiere of this coming Saturday. So location-wise, have you guys picked out a location, like in Beaumont in particular? So that is a very good question. So we have not picked out the location yet. But being that I've been back and forth in the office, you know, the city of Beaumont, city of Port Arthur, you know, we already have the green light for that. But whenever we get into pre-production, you know, we'll have, you know, location scouters to come in and find the locations that they're looking for. Now, the way this is going to work for our film, 50% of it, uh, about 50% of it is going to be filmed in Southeast Texas, Beaumont, Port Arthur area. And then we have areas in Mobile, Alabama at a virtual production studio where we'll be filming scenes. And then we have stuff in the UK where we're going to be filming it. So... This is one of the things you have to understand that get your passport. You must get a passport because um, it's a possibility that if you're filming that scene, you'll have to leave the country with us. Yeah. So get a passport. Well, well, if you want to become an actor, just in general. Huh? You, you want to get a passport. <laughs> yeah, well, you, yeah. And nowadays, you want to get a passport just even when you get the opportunity. Just right. to, you don't want to be last minute waiting for it. Absolutely. Because right now, you don't know the wait time and I've been having my passport for a while. I'm, I've expedited. Uh, and right now, it's coming in handy. Um, you know, I'm leaving in the Philippines uh, shortly. Uh, well, in two years, uh, Mary, my fiance, uh, she's from the Philippines. Well, we're going to have two ceremonies, you know, one in her country and then one out here. Mm. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, get your passport. Get your passport. You're one step closer. Get your headshots. If you want to get into filming as an actor or actress, you definitely want to get your headshots. That is like mandatory. Anywhere, like if somebody wants to practice acting, they could act around this area, or it'd just be better just to practice on your own if you had to. So, believe it or not, there are a lot of projects going on. Um, student films um, at Lamar Beaumont. Okay. Um, there's a, um, a professor, Jeremy Howa, and I've worked with Jeremy many times. Um, I did a Do Good commercial with him, a uh, Clayton Townhomes uh, commercial with him, uh, MCT Credit Union commercial with him, um, a World Gym commercial with him, and we filmed uh, the boxing film Against the Ropes together. I love Jeremy. Hopefully he'll be there at the premiere. But he's also a college professor um, that teach film. So his students are always working on projects. So that's one thing I do recommend. You know, if you want to get your resume up, if you want to learn the craft, and if you want to, like, get into acting, I highly recommend starting off with student films first. That way, one, you can get the experience. Two, you won't be as shy because usually with student films, the crew is, is it's small, but everybody's friendly. So, you know, you're, you're working with the same people over and over again through rehearsal. You make friends. You know, and plus, you can put this on your resume. So whenever you do start submitting for bigger films, when you want to get into Marvel, you know, that casting director, Sarah Finn or whoever, they'll look at their um, resume. I'm like, okay, they did student films, but wow, this person got a lot of work. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get him an audition, see what he or she can do. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think helping out, being in front of a lot of people, talking, make you very uncomfortable. Right. It'll help you out in the long run because that's the thing is a lot of people are very uncomfortable Absolutely. On doing that. Absolutely. Like, like I said, like uh, most people, when they if they have to give a eulogy, they'd mm -hmm. rather be the person in the casket than giving out a eulogy, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And it's like the, the more you do it, the, the better you get. You know, I was talking to the kids uh, this week. You know, I was at Beaumont United talking to uh, the students there in Odom Academy. And um, then I was at Tacoa Academy. And, you know, a lot of the kids were saying that, you know, courage or being shy. And I explained to them, you know, the more you do things, you know, the more comfortable you get. You know, even with film, you know, if if I'm seeing you every day, you know, I may be shy at first, but if I'm working with you every day, you know, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be comfortable working together. You know, I'm seeing you every day. We're rehearsal, rehearsing, and you know, crack a joke here and exactly. there. Exactly. So you know, you're gonna get, we're gonna get used to each other. So that's what I told them. You know, when it comes to filming, you're you're thinking like. The person you are right now, and then snap a finger in front of a camera. Yeah, you, anybody would be nervous, but it takes weeks and 
weeks, you're rehearsing, you're seeing the same people over and over again. So once you're in front of the camera, you're in hair, makeup, wardrobe, and you're in front of the camera and all these people, you're around the production assistants, you're not nervous because you know Billy, Jacob, Jasmine, Tom, and you know all these people already because you've already was working with them in the beginning through in the casting process, the rehearsal pro- process, the, the test screening. So when you're filming, you're, you're good. You're, 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 and then you do these films over and over again. So when you come to like doing a podcast like this, yeah. you know, you won't be nervous because you're used to being around people. You're used to being on a mic. You're used to being yourself. Yeah. What to say? Practice makes perfect, right? Exactly. It's, yes. That's always going to be true. Mm-hmm. So you said, well, I'll call it uh, this Saturday. Be there. Be there. You don't want to miss it. Like, uh, you don't want to miss it. Um, dress code is uh, anywhere between casual or formal. You, you, or you could just wear anything, but just don't wear basketball shorts and some slippers. Oh, no, yeah. You can, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a premiere. You can't go like that. Yeah, no. don't do that. Because it was going to be just an exclusive screening, you know, wear whatever you want. But, you know, we just was getting so much traction. And, you know, our casting director was like, hey, Justin, is this going to be a, um, a red carpet premiere? I was like, yeah, we might as well. Might as well. It's going to be a lot of people. Might as well. You know, it's going to be a, a lot of stuff going on. You know, we're going to have uh, the display of the action figures um, listed. Um, the, it's going to have Adam Huxley gun and Kez's gun in a shadow box, you know, for people to see. You know, it's, it's props. You know, it's a, it's a prop a hero weapon. So, you know, it's, I say, yeah, we might as well have the um, bring the red carpet. Let's just let's go all out. Let's yeah. make it happen. Let's just make it happen. Go all out. Everybody get your suits, get your dresses, wear something nice. If you don't want to wear nothing formal, that's fine. Get casual, but it's going to be fun. Are you guys going to have, like, uh, posters or anything that you guys can oh, sell? Yeah. Are you guys going to sign everything? Absolutely. Everything? Yeah, okay. it's going to be amazing. Like, it's going to be it's gonna be one for the books. You know, this is my first premiere that I'm hosting, and it's, it's been a lot of work. You know, I've been to a lot of premieres, and, you know, the difference is, you know, I, I get dressed and I, and I go. But now I'm the one that has to orchestrate everything, you know, make sure everything is, you know, together, marketing, yeah. know, all this stuff. So it's it's been a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but a lot of fun, right? Yeah. It, a little bit of fun. A little yeah, bit, man. a little bit, a little so, bit. I mean, it's yeah. not, it, it, I won't say it's work, then if you're having fun. Right. You know? But I'm grateful. I am yeah. grateful for it because, you know, like I said, I look back to when I was just an extra and then seeing where I'm at now. And being able to offer job opportunities for those who are interested. So, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm not complaining. I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I may be tired, but I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. When you first started as an extra, did you see yourself in this position? No. No? No. Um, you know, I, I walked into that, to that genre of work, and I was excited, you know, just being just – being in the film industry, like, you know, being a, 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 a component, even though, you know, with an engine, you know, I may not be a piston, but I'm a screw. I'm a little screw yeah. that, that helps keep the engine. So just the fact that I'm, I'm part of something great, you know, for me, it was amazing. But I did get uncomfortable because, you know, I wanted more. You know, I wanted to be more. And, um, like, it's... It's amazing when I take a step back and I look how far you know I've came, and even now, you know, I know there's still more room for improvements, and I and I still want to do more. Yeah, yeah. Where do you think you see yourself in like ten years? To say, ten years directing anything like that? Maybe directing, maybe flying with a cape or something. Maybe a superhero. Maybe DC Marvel. I hope. If if you had to choose a character, which character? If I had to choose a character, well, it had to be a character that's already not that have not been cast in. So it, uh, I don't or, know. Or, or would you want a, like a brand new character just for yourself? A brand new character would be just fine. Yeah. You know, they're um, with Marvel Studios. What if season two? They're actually showing like their first original character, which is uh, a Native American woman. Uh, she almost looked like Pocahontas. Mm-hmm. Um, they just released the trailer today, and this is actually like their newest addition to Marvel Comics. This character has no backstories like Doctor Strange, Iron Man. I'm like, wait a minute. So if they can just they write can in create. a new character, they can yeah, they can create a new character. So I wouldn't mind having like you know being created into 
you know, the Marvel comic storyline mm-hmm. and everything. That'd be amazing. Yeah, or even create your own new comic book. Who knows? It started That's off from there. That's true. That's true. You know, like, and I may go home and I'm going to dream about it and I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and I'm like, you know what? R- Robin is right. Let me, he, let me go for this. He is right. He is right. I think I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see that. Well, Justin, it was nice having you over here. Uh, I can't wait to see the film. I'm going to be out there. I'll make sure uh, to get autographs and all that stuff. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's been such an honor. It's been fun. I can't wait to do it again. Oh, trust me, I'm gonna have you more a couple more times here. And thank you for coming as well, too, right? Awesome. All right, people, don't forget to come see you, all right? I'll have the description at the bottom. I'll link the what I call the trailer and also uh Ticketmaster they could get it, right? Right. Either um online at ticketmaster.com or you can go to the box office or you can get your tickets at the door. Either way. Okay, cool. All right. Catch you guys later. All right.